How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Blue Shifting, and welcome to our brand new series, Saint Maker. Now, this is from the people who actually made Love Esquire, which was the game that we just finished on the, our Friday slot, and they actually reached out to me about this game's existence, like literally a week ago. It just barely dropped. And the premise seemed interesting, and the patrons seemed to be interested in it as well, so when it came time to select our Friday series, this is what was chosen. Now, I've done a little bit of non-spoiler digging. Just keep in mind, this is going to be a psychological horror type of story. It's going to have a lot of religious iconic, iconic, uh, iconography. Um, and it's going to be very, like, th it's going to be thematic. So, like, it's going to have stuff that's going to be probably a little weird, disturbing, potentially. Uh, it's going to be tied to religion. Uh, I, I get an impression of a kind of Fata Morgana feel to it, but again, just kind of a fair warning if that's not your cup of tea, like, that's perfectly understandable. Though, of course, I always recommend if this is something you're considering getting, watch this first episode, let it be kind of a, a, a dip your toe into it, and then obviously please support the developers if you haven't played this yet. Um, it's always good to support, especially smaller teams and newer VN creators because they need all the support they can get. They make great games like this, and uh, I just want to make sure we continue to keep an eye out for them and just look for the gems that are out there that might not be getting as much traction just simply because they're from smaller developers. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much heads up. If you're new to the channel, I cover lots of story-based content. Primarily, I've done visual novels because they're my favorite form of like storytelling medium, but because of patron support recently, I've moved to a five-video-a-week uh, model where I also play heavy story-based content. So like currently I'm doing Legend of Heroes Child in the Sky and uh, Yakuza Zero. So like you can find more than just visual novels, but visual novels are, by, I believe, the cream of the crop. So hopefully this is something that draws your attention. But yeah, um, it's been a while since I've done a horror game. I'm interested to see how this goes. The only other caveat I'm going to say before we jump in is apparently um, this is a shorter story. So Frankly, we might be done with this before you know it. Just depends on how long these episodes go and everything. So I guess there's not really much else to say other than uh, we'll get right started. So I'll set up some of uh, the uh, you know, back end stuff with like the audio and like making sure everything's looking balanced and then we'll jump right in. So just give me one second and we'll get started. All right, let's get started. Good start. Good, 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 good. Yay. All right. Somewhere in the forest is a stream. Maybe a flower bed and a grove full of old trees, like the ones in storybooks. Fairies darting in and out of knot holes. Okay. Focus, Holly. Get your head out of the clouds. All right, so Holly looks like our main person, at least for the intro. I'm not here for that. This isn't some storybook. Fairies? They aren't real. It's like what Mom always said. There are only angels... and demons. Oh. Take a look at this real quick, so I want to see... Alright, so basic controls... Basic to proceed... Manual skip... Hide UI is H. Okay, that would be good to know. I like that. Cool. So, no real stories, just angels and demons. <clears throat> so this is the place. Huh? Door is open. Okay. Hello? Excuse me, is anyone here? That is the loudest door I've ever heard. Maybe the whole thing got cancelled? That'd be nice. I have the whole place to myself. Huh. All the mysterious adventures I could get into. Alone. In an abandoned convent. No parents. No adults. Just. Me. <sighs> I mean, it sounds nice. Is that? Oh, that must be them. Well, so much for the fantasy. Coming from further in. Hello. I think it's worse that I know this is gonna be a horror game because I like you can't not know from the trailer and such and just like the like everything. But like 
that's like making it worse because this is creeping me out and it shouldn't be okay oh I probably shouldn't disturb them I heard that some nuns spend their entire lives singing prayers prayers for God prayers for the world for the sinners get it get boring after a while. Yeah, I would imagine so. It does. A little bit. <laughs> but, well, it's it's for a good cause. Our order's sacred mission and all that. It's really interesting having just played Love Esquire, like, I can definitely, I, I'm pretty sure that we have a lot of the similar voice actors in this, and like, you can kind of like, feel it in the voice work. <laughs> oh, hello. Shush, lower your voice. It's ill manners to disturb prayer. Oh, sorry. Where the heck did she, she come from? Okay, just chill out, Holly. It's just a nun. <laughs> Is everything all right? You were talking to yourself. Oh, I'm a pro at that. It's what I literally do every day for fun. Is talk to myself. There's, there's ostensibly people there, but it is interesting to think about the fact that I'm literally sitting in a room talking to myself. Huh? Was I? I didn't notice. <laughs> it's alright. I do that too. This place has a very special air to it. It's hard not to get caught up in my own thoughts sometimes. Um, yeah. I gotta say, this place, it's bigger than I expected. Oh, yes. Used to get lost all the time. I still do, to be honest. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here I am, chattering away again. How can I help you? I'm here for the recollection? Oh, yes, yes, of course! Oh, you're looking for our dearest and most admirable Mother Superior. Down the hallway, third room to the left. Probably in the middle of one of her stunning lectures. Cool. Nothing says civility like a name, Mother Superior. I see. Uh, thank you very much, and, um, sorry again for disturbing you. Oh, please. I'm here to help. By all means, feel free to disturb me anytime. <laughs> uh, okay. <sighs> They're getting younger every year. Huh? Oh, nothing. It's always good to start early. Anyway, I hope you enjoy your stay here. Yeah. Sure. Th thank you. Hmm. Uh-huh. I'm 15. I'm not that young. Maybe it was that stupid little scream I made. Nice job, Holly. Looking real composed back there. Okay. God, what is with the creepy statues? Is this the place? Huh? Whoa. Looks like someone's been trying to put it all back together piece by piece. Yeah. Okay. Must have taken a lot of work. Though, it still doesn't look right. Careful, plaster's still fresh on that one. Just one touch can bend the whole thing out of shape. <laughs> Hello. Our most venerable founder was particularly fond of this one. Saint Rita of Cassia. Are you familiar? Can't say I am. Born 1381, died 1457. Oh! Are you reading that, or do you just know that? Patron saint of lost and impossible causes. Um, yes, a bit. At the age of twelve, she married into an abusive family. Regrettably, her two sons grew up to take after their father. Violent. Vengeful. And so, she prayed to God to save their souls. And so, God answered. They died of disease soon after. Hmm. Yes, loveliness. A harsh lesson, but an important one to take to heart. God works in mysterious ways. Even death can sometimes be a mercy. I... I see. I'm gonna love this place. It's just great. <laughs> but enough of that. You've yet to introduce yourself. Uh, oh, hello there. I'm Holly Beltron. Oh, yes, Miss Holly. I've been expecting you, though I don't recall receiving you. Huh? Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I knocked, but no one came. And so you chose to trespass instead? What? No, I didn't mean to. I was just... That's a little harsh. I mean, she was expected, right? The door was open. 
Give whatever name you want to your sin, Miss Holly. Oh, fetch. It is still a sin, nonetheless. That's extreme. <laughs> your bags. Kindly lay them down. My bags? Oh, you'd be surprised the things that we find. Cigarettes, contraceptives, pornography. Can you imagine bringing such things into the house of God? Mm. Astounding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's horrible. I should have covered it. Or at least kept it under a hidden pocket. Not that my bag has any. Hmm. Well, what do we have here? I knew it. Why'd I even bring that stupid thing? Kylie Taylor, the sorceress of Witchwood. Oh. Yeah, I can see how this is gonna go. Uh, that's just something I'm reading. Oh, yes. Well, it is always good to read. I myself simply love books. Books can enrich. They can teach. But when observing a work, never forget to take spirituality into account, especially when it comes to material written for young, impressionable minds. Oh, boy. I'm going to love this place, let me tell you. Was this... Was this, uh, it, it, are we looking, is she like the, the person who sets the guidelines for uh, material restrictions when it comes to visual novels at YouTube? Because it's kind of feeling like it. Hmm. And there it was. Cradle just beneath the canopy of elder trees, candlelight pouring from the notched windows, and the sound of laughter echoing from within. This was her new home. It was here that she would learn magic. Magic. Such an innocent-sounding word. Uh -huh. But, dear child, there are no greys when it comes to witchcraft. All of it, black as sin. A proper child of God would know this. Okay. It's... All right, I'm down. You can do this. You've always been good at this. Hmm. Tell her what she wants to hear. Play dumb. It works all the time. I don't think either of these are going to work. <sighs> Playing dumb does seem to be what works, though, because she, like, she, like, when she, when she was asked about, like, the saint, she knew in her mind, but she played it off like, oh, I don't know. I had no idea. Are you sure? From what I've read, it seems harmless. The worst things always seem harmless. Th that's true. Right. Ignorance on my part. I really should do more research when it comes to these things. But I've barely read any of it. And now that I know, I can just return it to the bookstore. No harm done. Hmm. Hmm. Notes scribbled oh. on the margins. Creases on the spine. Edges are worn. I have an eye for detail. Would you believe it was a used bookstore? I actually love those stores. Per like, in real life, me personally, I do love used bookstores. They're really, like, it's a nice place to go. You can get some really interesting treasures for a really good price. It supports local businesses. It's really just a good place to go check out. Even if you don't intend to buy anything, but just want to go in into a place. It's like a library, but somehow more how do i put it i guess knowing that you could walk away with ownership of the books that you have on the shelves there, there's something special about that <laughs> you can feign ignorance all you want but the lord is always watching mm -hmm. i realize i'm not making a very good first impression i've been looking forward to this for weeks I guess I've been so excited that I've just been all over the place lately. Moving forward, I'll try my best to improve. I'm sorry. <sighs> oh, improvement. There you go. That is one thing that we, the sisters of Saint Idolora, hold very dear. For Saint Rita's children, death was their only salvation. But for those willing to fix themselves, well... You'll find that this convent is the perfect place for spiritual rebirth. Oh boy. Here, you can be anyone you want to be. Except a sinner, right? Anyone I want to be. Y yes, I understand. 
That... that sounds great. I'd like that. Well, now that we've settled that, let's start things off the right way. I am Sister Adira, and I will be in charge of your spiritual formation for the next few weeks. It's very nice to meet you, Sister Adira. There. That wasn't so hard now, was it? And as for your book, I think it's best that I keep it. But... But she can't just take it. Let it go. Trust me. We've already done enough damage. Yeah. There's no use arguing. Better just let the whole thing go. <laughs> it's nothing. Never mind. Hmm. Miss Holly, I take it you're an avid reader? Yes, ma'am. Then that also means you enjoy writing, yes? Not necessarily, but they do to tend to go hand in hand. Y yes. I guess. At least I didn't bring any of my fanfics. She'd have a field day with those. Oh, wait here for just a moment. This should suit you just fine. Prayer journal for teens. Pray with style. There's a prayer at the end of every page. A journal. Time has a funny way of muddling memory. It helps to have an anchor. That way we can always look back and see the old with new, fresh eyes. Journaling is pretty useful and pretty cool. Like being able to flip through and find like notebooks and stuff from my old, like my high school days or my college days. Like I could go back and I can see what I was thinking at the time. But I definitely wasn't organized. Like I didn't keep a book by my bed and write in it. Well, I kind of did, but. It was not a typical journal where I just like wrote about what was going on. I would either write down if I just had really strong thoughts I wanted to get on paper, story ideas that I wanted to work into something in the future so I didn't forget about them. Or I most the most journal-like thing I do is I keep a dream journal. Um, I have very vivid and very intense dreams. I don't always remember them, but when I do, like I, I guess a lot of people experience dreams very differently. Like. Um, I've seen people who claim they can't read in a, in a dream. And that, while I can't confirm if I can read or not in a dream, I definitely have been able to look at like texts in a dream and know what was being said there. I don't know if I can remember like specifically like reading text, but like I could do things like open a book and I would learn things in the dream. Um, not everyone dreams in full color. Sometimes it's like semi-colored or, or kind of drab or even black and white, I dream in very vivid color. Um, some people don't have or remember sensations of touch. I get tactile sensations. I can feel texture, I can feel temperature in my dreams. It's actually woken me up before. Touching something that was very, very cold will like wake me up suddenly. Um, I also have a propensity for lucid dreaming. Sometimes I become aware in the dream that it's a dream in two different ways. So it's like a hard lucid and a soft lucid. Like the hard lucid is the one you talk about where it's like, oh, this is a dream. I can do what I want here and I can on a whim, like create and manage and change things. Uh, that it, it, it pretty much, it's like being in God mode for a while. It's really great. I have maybe one of those a year. Uh, more often than not, I call of what are called soft lucid dreams, which is where I, it's typically because I'm aware enough that I tend to remember everything, but I also am aware enough that it's a dream that I have like a bit of control. Um, these are like the superpower dreams where like I can make, de make things happen that normally couldn't. Um, these are the dreams where like when it starts turning into a nightmare, I typically can just jump out of it and jump into a different dream where like. If I start getting uncomfortable or feeling worried or stressed in a dream, I can kind of just go like, nope, this isn't real. And I just bounce and I, my dream just transitions to completely something else. My favorite dreams, though, are my continuation ones where I will have a dream. And over the course of a few weeks, when I go to sleep, it picks up where I left off and I continue on a grand narrative journey. And sometimes I get replays where I'll have the same journey and sequence of events in, in the dream play out in sequential order, but like years apart from each other. I've written down some of these before, so I've been able to verify that they are the same dream, but repeated. Um, it's really, really cool. And so being able to track that and keep track of it has been one of the coolest things I've done. I'm really grateful I took the time to do. I highly recommend dream journals just because they're fascinating. And uh, oftentimes you probably dream more than you think but you just tend to forget it really quickly. So if you have a notebook or your phone right next to you when you wake up from something like a vivid dream, just open it up and start writing it down as quickly as possible. 
and you'll find that you'll cement a lot of those details in your mind if you just give them like a print version. So even if you write just a basic summary, I often will will hold on to a lot more of the vivid like aspects of the dream than I can properly type down, especially quickly when I'm half asleep. Uh, but like by by going to the effort of like trying to chronal, uh, trying to make a record of it, I remember a lot of it. Anyway, long story, dreams are cool. This next week will be integral to your spiritual formation. It would be best to keep a record of your thoughts. As we've discussed, not all stories are worth reading. But if you keep your heart open, there's definitely a story for you here. What I want to know is, like, why is Holly here at all? Like, it sounds like she wanted to be here, at least kind of wanted to be here. Um, not sure what's driven her to come here, but, like, there's obviously a reason for it. A story of your own personal journey with God. Can I trust you to do that? Yes, ma'am. And thank you, Sister Adira. Please call me Sister Adira. For our time together, I'd like to think of us as family. Family? Like, I need more of that. Now, come this way. I'll show you to your room. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, Sister Adira. <laughs> I'd be so bad. I'm so bad with names. Kylie Taylor and the Sorceress of the Witchwood. Notes all over the margins. Letter on the first page, pink ink, strawberry scent. Limited edition cover, signed. And I'm never seeing it again. Gosh darn it. <sighs> Fine, Holly, relax. This is for the best. You're not here for that. You're here to be better. Okay. Whoa. Like, I, it's interesting that we have, like, blue hair. But she's got purple eyes. That's interesting. Like, they're definitely going for a artistic expression. Gabriella. Oh, Gabriella. This is Holly. She will also be joining us for the recollection. Hey there. Just call me Gabby. Gabriella is your God-given name. It's a name you were born with. And I happen to think it's quite lovely. Be proud of it. Abbreviations tend to only confuse... Right. No nicknames allowed. That's news to me. And I hope it's news you take to heart. We do, after all, have rules here, Miss Gabriella. Yeah. Sure. Oh boy, we're off to a good start. Okay, just do what you, be just do, what you do best, Holly. You know the drill. Tell her that it's a pretty cool name. Let her know how excited you are to be here. Well... Hello there. Pleased to meet you. My name's Holly. And for the record, I think Gabriella is a pretty cool name. Had a classmate named Gabriella. Really smart. Ran for the student council. Though now that I think about it, she might have lost. It was close, though. Good to know. <laughs> so, um, are we the first ones to arrive? To think that I was worried I might have been late. As of now, Miss Holly, we are complete. The recollection will start first thing in- Wait, seriously? There's only two of us. Yes. Sadly, as of late, attendance has been quite low. Can't imagine why. <laughs> so! Yeah, let's, um... Let's go do praying and stuff. There she goes again. Is she for real? Like, real subtle girl. Oh. I think you know the answer, Gabriella. <sighs> distractions. So many distractions we're letting into our lives. And even in these trying times, we still take for granted God's loving grace. You two, however, are very fortunate that your parents were responsible enough to take an active role in your formation. Okay, okay, so... We're here under duress, but the kind, fam familiar duress, where it's like, you aren't forced to be here, but you are. Yeah, sure. Um, that's true, Miss uh, Sister Adira. I believe these few weeks will be an enlightening experience for all of us. <laughs> She's not impressed by our brown nosing. Well, I'm so glad to hear that, child. Recollections like these are a very special opportunity, and I hope that both of you will be wise enough to seize it. Yeah, 
I'm already feeling God's almighty wisdom. <laughs> uh-huh. Jeez, say that a bit louder, why don't you? I will give you the rest of the day to settle in. We shall start first thing tomorrow. But until then, I urge you both to take in the silence this place has to offer. Reflect. Pray. Don't be freaked out by all the statues. She sure is... something. But maybe we just got off of the rug foot? Like it or not, we're roommates now. I should probably say something to her. Though, doesn't look like we have much in common. What's up? You're... staring. Oh, sorry! I... I was just wondering... Okay, Holly, here goes. Just play cool. Uh, so, she's got a cute bracelets. Talk about that. Or maybe try and ask her about the place. You know what? She probably picked her bracelets. So it might be good to talk about that because that's an invitation for her to talk about herself rather than talking about this place that she's being forced to be. <laughs> so, um, those are some cute bracelets you got there. Look. Let's just cut to the chase. What are you here for, exactly? Whoa, hold up there. Why does that sound like a prison talk? I excuse me? What do you mean? This isn't exactly a prime summer destination. Dingy convent up in the mountains, prayer sessions every other hour, Bible readings, character building lectures. Pretty sure they'll even have us do chores and stuff. You don't really go here unless, you know, you're one of those types. Oh, I see. Well, I might not like it here, but I needed this. Time away from home, away from my parents. They worry. I mean, of course they worry. After everything that's happened. I mean, true, it's not exactly my idea of fun. But once this is all done, I can come back to my mom with a big smile on my face. Tell her that I'm better. Tell her everything's okay. I'll go back to being the perfect little angel she expects me to be. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, hello? You okay? Sorry, just having deep thoughts. Huh? Oh, yeah, sorry, I... Never mind, it's fine. You don't have to answer. No, no. You see, um... That's something I want to talk about. I should probably say that. But does this come off as rude? No, I'll just tell the truth. No, that's stupid. Where would I even begin? I should just make something up. I see. Well, in that case, I don't think we have much to talk about. Wait, what? Let me spell it out for you. I don't want to be here. And if you're thinking that by the end of this, we'll be braiding each other's hair and talking about boys and, I don't know, having Bible study sessions together or whatever, you're mistaken. Oh. All right. Glad we got that out of the way. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got stuff to unpack. Woohoo! It's gonna be fun! The uh, heck is her deal? I'm just trying to make things work. Well, I guess this is my bed for the next few days. I should start unpacking too. It's only a week, right? What could possibly? You know, it's only a week. Not this nicest looking place. Maybe if I fix it up a bit. <laughs> How do you fix that? That's That's peeling paint. There we go. Looking better already. We got a picture there. Us and maybe sister? Someone similar height. A little quarter to call my own. It's been a while since I shared a room with someone. It's been even longer since I slept in a room that wasn't my own. It all feels so familiar. <sighs> maybe a bit too familiar? <sighs> yeah, I think that's better for now. Interesting. So that tells us about that issue. What do I have here? Story of my own, huh? Hopes and wishes. Hmm. I really wish I had my book. <laughs> It'd be nice to get lost. To get, uh, it would be nice getting lost in the pages. The turn of a spell key, a heartfelt secret, a little push. That's all it takes to get into a mysterious world of Witchwood. Just what the heck are you writing? This is a prayer journal, Holly. That's right. This won't do at all. I'm supposed to be talking to God. Focus, Holly. To my dearest Heavenly Father. Well, here I am. Wonder what we'll be up to tomorrow. 
Well, whatever it is, I'm sure you'll be with me every step of the way. We start off a bit rough, but I'm optimistic for the wonderful journey ahead. Blech. It just feels fake. Amen. Good night. <laughs> Achievements! Your new home! <laughs> We're gonna die! <laughs> Go at the fetch. What was that? Hey, Holly. Huh? Liana? What are you doing? Uh, I... I can't sleep. That's not my problem. Huh, I can fix that. Behold my special move! Sister. Whoa! Liana! Okay, okay, I'm up. Haha! <laughs> Mission accomplished. She seems fun. Liana. Huh? What's that you got there? Just a book. Wanna see it? Oh, wow. I don't remember Mom buying this. She didn't. No, he lent it to me. Pretty cool, huh? See? Her name's Kylie. She's strong and brave. Just like someone else I know. Huh? You really think so? Nah, just trying to get on your good side. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, oh, but here's the coolest part. She's... She's a witch. Uh, what? Rihanna, you know how mom gets. Remember what happened when you brought home that toy devil -y? Dragon. It was a dragon. It's not my fault mom wasn't listening. And she's still not going to listen if she finds something like this. Okay. Now, the, fun th the, the thing is, for me, my perspective here, I grew up in a very religious atmosphere. Like a community that was very religious, a household that was very religious. I've got a very religious, like, posterity, like, like, like ancestry that's involved heavily in, like, in uh, religious dogma. It's very traditional, very, there's a lot of expectations there. So I get a lot of this, but my parents, thankfully, were not oppressive about it. There were aspects that they were definitely, like, concerned with, uh, and wanting to make sure that we're controlled, but uh, they never were this much. I mean, like, my dad would take me to church every Sunday, but he also was the one that encouraged me when I saw, like, the trailer for the first Lord of the Rings movie when I was in fifth or sixth grade. He challenged me, saying, like, hey, I'll take you to that movie if you read the books. And so I read the books, and then he took me to the movies. And, like, I grew up watching Star Wars and, like, like all of that. It's just... I feel like it's important to be culturally attentive and like I understand the desire to want to protect the people you love and wanting them to be safe and if you genuinely are 100% believe in a religion adhering to those tenets like perfectly feels like the right way to go but my experience based on like watching others who went through lifestyles like that um, and seeing people who didn't and kind of being able to compare and contrast I think letting people have freedom letting kids have an imagination I think does a lot more good than harm in the long run. Look, Liana, you need to stop getting yourself in trouble. Don't worry so much. I'll just hide it in a place she'll never find. But... <sighs> just give it back as soon as you can. Well, about that, you see, I was, um, thinking maybe we could read it together, just like how we used to. Really? Y yeah, but if you don't want to... No, it's... Okay, sure, we can read it. Aww. But only because the cover looks cool. Come on over here. Aww. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hmm, the whispering forest. The sky was a muddy brown. As brown and muddy as the ground around St. Mary's Orphanage. Despite this, Kylie was determined to give her little sister Farley the best birthday ever. Oh, Kylie has a sister? I is that her picture? I like her. She's mine. I'm doing her voice. That's cute. I like that they read the stories together and do voices. That's really cool. Man, I wish I could have grown up doing that with a sibling. I got siblings, but we were too, like, our age, our age differences were pretty wide like wide enough that we never really did stuff you don't even know her yet <laughs> doesn't matter i got this feeling uh-oh hide hide hide, Tell hide the book, the book.
that. Oh! <laughs> Lovely. Can't move. Oh no. Uh. Oh, is this gonna be the sleep paralysis demon fun? I, I can't move. It's okay. This is fine. I'm just stuck in between sleep and waking up. Yep, yeah, nope. Nope, 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 nope. I've never had to go through this. I've heard people talk about it, though. I would... Ugh, ugh, I'm so sorry if you've ever had to experience this. Just breathe, Holly. Breathe. <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. That sound. Relax. It's just singing. That statue is not totally looking at us now when it wasn't before. Just prayers. Sounds kind of nice, right? Like a lullaby. Just close your eyes and go back to sleep, Holly. Just relax. Just hearing things. <sighs> there it is, the first ray of morning light. Breathe deep, take it in. Another day, another brilliant gift from God. Another opportunity to serve. Hmm. I'm pleased with it, though that wouldn't be enough for her. Cracks still need to be filled, blemishes need to be sanded, and of course, a new coat of paint. But for now, well, there are more important matters. I must not be distracted. Oh, dearest Heavenly Father, you visited me in your dreams last night. Don't worry, I remember. In my hand, you put a chisel, the other a holy Bible. They are used perfectly clear. Once again, we will now host young and impressionable guests on these sacred grounds. It has been a while. I am a bit nervous. I only ask that you give me the strength, the strength to be a holy mentor in the coming days, a worthy mentor. May your teachings guide my words that I may impart wisdom, and may your hands guide mine as I form these young girls to be the women you want them to be. Amen. <laughs> That's what's really challenging about religion is the fact that, like, the motivation for most people in religious function, in, like, worship, in clergy, in all of it, is purely out of a sense of good, selflessness, determination to do the right thing. It's the few who tend to mess that up for people. Best get ready. We've got a busy day ahead of us, after all. Huh? Who? Uh, hi. Oh, um, sorry. It's nothing. We've got 30 minutes. Let's get ready. Wouldn't want to be late now, would we? Yeah, sure. No white walls, no flower curtains. No mom, no Liana. You're not home. Get a grip, Holly. New place, new day, new you. You've got this. Remember, no distractions. Hi. Lovely morning, Sister Adira. Hmm. Why, yes. A lovely morning, indeed. If you were here just a bit earlier, you would have caught the sun shining right through that window. Amazing, the little things you notice when you take the time to stop and listen. And that's why we're here, isn't it? To stop and listen? <sighs> yep, sure is. <laughs> Fifty years ago, our founder, Saint Idolora, built this convent in order to train young girls such as yourselves to be proper ladies. Ladies worthy of becoming saints. Hang on. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Saint Idolora... Sainthood, at least in Catholic, like traditional Catholicism, like I, 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 I'm pretty sure, like they, they saint people are sainted long after they've deceased, like over a hundred years or something. Like it's like the precedent has never been set for someone to being like a saint, really close. Like, like, like the, like the, there's been a lot of debate about like Mother Teresa and her work, um, and be, her being sainted, but like how they're supposed to be like a certain amount of time. Or something so I it doesn't if, if I'm recalling correctly somebody who was able to found this building 50 years ago wouldn't be sainted unless it was like through somebody else like inspired by like so there's a like a, a founder who was inspired to build this place and they claim it was inspired by Saint Idolara 
During her time, the most beautiful flowers bloomed all over the convent. Oh, and the statues! With her skilled hands, in the right light, they'd look so real. Then, of course, the girls, like scared little lambs, they arrived, sick and broken. But Mother Idolora, oh, she healed them, she fixed them. They all emerged as lovely little angels. Lovely little angels. Mom would call us all that all the time. In front of her friends. In the coming days, In front of her I'd friends. like you to think of me as a mother. Whether it be concern or confession, you may come to me. Yeah, I'll consider it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sister. That's a very kind gesture. Now, before we start, here's a quick schedule of the recollection. Uh huh? Alright. I, Dolores, convict recollection youth formation, women's recollection schedule, opening remarks. It's all by Adira Veritagloss. So, opening remarks, facing sin, rosary and prayer, finding Mary amidst the chaos of current times, defining women, embracing the natural role, rosary and prayer, confession, covering the cracks, the road to saintly perfection. It's all just her. <sighs> yeah. Why, why even make a print out if you're just going to put yourself at every line? Yes? Any questions? None. This all looks really exciting. Oh, it does it. It is. Most of your time will consist of silent recollection and prayer sessions. Well, at least that's okay. But, as I've said before, aside from reflection, we shall also task you with action. What type of action are we talking about? Like a hammer to glass? Ooh. Simple tasks. Cooking. Cleaning. This convent doesn't maintain itself, you know. Right. And I expect you to attend to it with the utmost care. This is a holy place, after all. Newly inducted nuns have done similar things in the past. If any of you find yourself hearing the call, well, think of this as a great training opportunity. No promises. You could have just nodded your head. I expect none. But you may be surprised. The call finds us at the strangest of times, in the strangest of places. Now, to start off, let's have a bit of an exercise now, shall we? I'd like to show you something. Oh, gosh, that sound. It's one of those sounds that I, like, it's like, it's, it's, it's okay because it's kind of a simulated one, but it's like a marker on, like, cardboard sound. Oh, I hate it. It just, it's one of those sounds that just sends a chill up my spine. Like, it's not supposed to. It's the same thing that happens when you have, like, um, like styrofoam rubbing against cardboard or styrofoam against styrofoam. Like, it makes me cringe and want to die inside. Most people aren't affected by it. Ah, lovely, isn't she? Wholesome, pure, chaste. The face of a saint if I ever saw one. It's just a faceless person. There's no second guessing, no desperate search for her place in the world. She is content to know that she is exactly where God wants her to be. However, sadly, this is not always the case. The world is moving so fast these days, people coming up with all sorts of answers to their problems. So many opportunities are now open to bright young women such as yourselves. You can be anything. Scientists, lawyers, businesswomen, physicians, even artists. And they're all wrapped up so nicely in narratives of fulfillment and prestige. And at times they can sound so appealing. But us women, we should not let ourselves get distracted from what really matters. Got a good guess where this is going. God and family. Yeah. Holly. Please come over here. Yeah, sure. Gabrielle is just like, uh. <laughs> now, I want you to write down all the things that might be stopping you from being a proper child of God. Well, this should be easy. Time to put all those Christian life education classes to good use. Um. Interesting thing. So, original sin 
and modern society. So modern society is what she's gonna want to hear, I believe, based on what my experience was in like religion. Original sin's an interesting one though, because the question really comes down in a dogmatic view whether original sin is something we have to overcome or not. Um, a lot of times it's said that it's like it's an ori original sin is like the sin of fallen from the Garden of Eden by Adam and Eve. That essentially we are all t uh, tainted and irredeemable on our own because of it. But then that's the idea of what the savior in Christianity was supposed to do is that was to uplift us and to help us be able to overcome that original sin. But original sin was never something that we did. It was just something that was innate to our fallen flawed nature. So, Temptations of Modern Society. Well, the way I see it, with all the progress we've made as a society, we failed to take our faith into consideration. As such, we're surrounded by so many distractions that tempt us. Yes, yes. It's quite clear that you've been paying attention, Miss Beltran. But we're here to talk about you. What are the things that hinder you from becoming a child of God? Me? There's... there's nothing. I'm perfectly fine. All that stuff last year, I'm already over it. Um... well... What's the stuff that Mom always complains about? Maybe talk about those? American celebrities, party culture, reproductive health. I have no idea. <laughs> uh... What would be holding Holly back? Reproductive health? I doubt it. She's young, and she does not seem like somebody who's even allowed to consider relationships. Party culture? I also think she seems very much like she's very cautious and not the kind to go out to parties. American celebrities? She does enjoy books, so I could see her being interested in that. So maybe that. I, um, well, there's American celebrity- Miss Beltran. I recall confiscating a particular book from you the other day. Oh, that. Of course she'd bring that up. Well, that stuff... It really isn't a big deal or anything. I'm sure there are other... Th Oftentimes, I find it best that we start with the small things. But, if you want, perhaps we can talk about other things. Your family life, perhaps? Clever. Immediately go right for the core of the problem, because we're going to avoid it like a plague. My family life. Maybe we should, though. I... <laughs> no, we don't talk about that. Is everything all right, Holly? Yeah, I'm fine. Let's stick to the small things. Ugh. Is it over? Okay. Kylie Taylor. Good. I'd also urge you to examine any other pieces of literature that you might be reading. There is a special place in hell for people who lure children to sin, and all in the guise of fanciful tales and happy endings. Hell. It's always hell, isn't it? I just want to read my stories. Jeez. Chill out. It's... Just a book. <laughs> She's read it before. Just a book? So is the Bible. And yet, such a book has built cathedrals, formed nations, saved souls. In the wrong hands, don't you think the opposite is also possible? I would argue that if the, like, you're saying the Bible built cathedrals, formed nations, saved souls. But I can also counter that and say that. Uh, as it built cathedrals, Bible also has manipulated masses, uh, formed nations. It has also destroyed. It has also destroyed nations, and saved souls. It also condemned the innocent. I mean, there's certifiable evidence of all of that, and the cathedral one is an example of the same thing. Like, yeah, cathedrals were built, and there were amazing constructions and, and, and monuments to faith of the people who built them, often being built by people who would never see them completed, knowing that they would never see them completed. But it was often at the, the peril, the starvation, and the ruination of, like, livelihood of the common, like, peasant people 
who suffered because of it. Not the rich, not the mighty, not the ones who built it, not the ones who would benefit from it, though manipulated. Form nations, and then you've got things like the Crusades, literally attempts to destroy nations and erase culture. <clears throat> Stuff that we see nowadays still we've, uh, uh, in other religions as well. In fact, one of the saddest things I I saw was a was a post about a story in um, I think in Iran or Afghanistan where there was a site or a museum that had ancient Sumerian artifacts like murals and depictions of like iconography and just you know history of humanity in like like one of the most interesting places in the world and it was a picture of a like a priest or 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 uh, someone who leads the religious order smashing it with a hammer because it didn't conform to or support the viewpoints and, and uh, that they considered virtuous and you know good you know it countered it it was an alternative to what they believed the truth to be so they destroyed it and that makes me very sad look I really don't see the problem here Kylie's a good witch kindness and friendship are what end up saving the day in the end, that's all that matters, right? Just what is she doing? This this isn't an argument you're going to win. You're simplifying the matter, Gabriella. These things, these stories, I know it all must seem harmless at first. It's all just make-believe after all. Brightly colored spells and magical creatures. They make it so easy to get caught up in the... the fantasy. But understand... These are all subtle seductions. They distract. She would absolutely hate this channel. <laughs> and that, at its core, these spells and rituals and familiars, it all leads back to the occult. We've all strayed so far. In the Old Testament, people like Kylie would have been stoned to death. Yeah, and I don't think that would be cool. Also... Ironically, ironically, I, I don't want to make anyone mad. Oh gosh, like, that's what this series is going to be. It's either going to make people really appreciative or really hate me. <laughs> I have nothing against religion and it's a concept. I think it's brilliant and I think it's motivated lots of good people to do really good things, but I've also seen it be used as a tool for destruction and manipulation. I don't like that. Um, one of the examples I wanted to bring up here is this idea that, like, um, like, Controlling information out of a guise of wanting to keep people's minds pure and help them be helpful is, like, ultimately destructive. It is net negative. It, it does crushing ideas, even if they feel like they are foreign or wrong or I impure, leads to more, um, like, restrictive thinking. And restrictive thinking can often lead towards misunderstandings and violence and misappropriation, and essentially it throws people down different caveats of sin. Like, instead you're trading people who have a, who have a, an inkling of, like, an understanding of, like, basic occult-type terms or um, things like gender studies, and you're saying that those are wrong and they make people twisted and evil, but then by banning them, alienating them, you are then taking, turning and making it seem like it's okay to destroy them and thus turning people towards violence and bigotry and hatred, which are also sins. Which is interesting because you don't ever see that, it, it, well, not no, that you don't ever, but you rarely see that counterpoint being made that by trying to, like, control the narrative, you end up simply mobilizing the more, the most aggressive portion of the community to committing sins in the name of righteousness, which almost is worse in a lot of ways. Miss Rivera, why don't you give this activity a try? Can't think of anything. Is that so? Do you think your life is perfect, Miss Rivera? No, of course not. We're all far from perfect here. But my mind's just drawing blanks right now. Then perhaps I can be of help. More often than not, I find that the biggest obstacle young girls like you often face lies in the environment you place yourself in. I see. Hmm. Let's <laughs> reflect on your friends. Have they been a positive influence? Mine have. Yeah, they have. Helped me through pretty tough times. 
mother has told me a different story. Really, now? Yes. Sneaking out to these social gatherings. Coming home late at night. Surrounding yourself with the wrong sort of people. The wrong sort? Please understand. It's not entirely your fault. Wow, that's super condescending. I was young once. I know how it's like. You're at a very sensitive age. And it's at this time that young girls are met with a whole new world of temptations. Yeah, whatever. Look, just drop it. It's interesting because, yeah, in one hand, I can see, like, when you're an adult, you feel like, oh, yeah, I was a kid once. I remember what it was like. But, A, you don't because I barely can remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So how am I supposed to understand a mindset of myself, like, 5, 10, and for some people, 20, 30, 40 years ago? You know, like, how are you supposed to put yourself in shoes that are that far gone? And expect yourself to be accurate. And then you also have to understand that, like, especially nowadays, but even, I'd say, in, like, the, the 1500s or whatever, like, a change over the course of 20 or 30 years culturally is pretty... It's 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 not negligible at the, at the, at the, the, the slowest pacing change in times of history. And in current day, is completely alien. Like, I grew up being able to kind of be a part of the rise of, like, modular technology of like cell phones and stuff like like they were definitely like around when I was a, like a kid but they became they went from being like a niche that only like like a few people had to now everyone has them you know and I was pretty young at the time obviously but I got to see that transition that already means that the world is so different that like when I look at other kids that were uh, really young like they live in a completely different world than I did and thus I can't assume I understand anything about it it is easy to mistake desire for love. Uh -oh. True love. True love can only occur between a chaste man and a chaste woman. I think I see where we're going with this one, and that's a definitely ex nay new. No, don't agree with that one. All right. Stop. Gabriella, running away will only serve to worsen your struggle. If you would simply be honest. Shut up! <laughs> yep. Only you can help yourself, Miss Rivera. I am merely a witness. The scars you have are far worse. You can't see them. But they dig deep. Deep at your soul. Miss Beltran. I would like your opinion. Oh, boy. Have I done something wrong? Do I upset you? <laughs> Why me? Oh, great. I should just say something, anything, just to stop this. Yeah, you don't have to be so pushy. Uh, uh, I... Um... No, that's not going to work. It just make her mad. Raise your voices, shouting, and the whole new set of rules to make sure that doesn't happen again. Yes? Uh, I, I just thought of another thing to write down. TV, it distracts me all the time. My grades aren't as high as they could be, but if I just cut down on my TV time, I know I can focus. Holly does suffer from crippling, like, um... Uh, what I call, what it was called for me growing up were, um, Sunday school, like, answers. Like, it's like, what are the answers to every question at a religious study? Pray, read your scriptures, go to church, you know, keep the tenets of the religion. Like, like, that was the answer ultimately to every question. Holly's kind of firmly in that camp. It's gotten her through most of the time and most of the challenges and conflicts that she's faced with her parents, especially. Just say the right answer and it gets you right through. Like, it at least placates the problem. It's not going to work here. And it's also very, very clearly, like, empty. Like, you can tell. Like, just listening to her, she's just speaking what she thinks you want to hear. Now, it's interesting. It's given me choices. But so far, the choices don't seem to matter because she keeps overruling her instincts. Like, maybe I'm the guiding of her instincts, what she wants. But then she's suppressed. She's used to having this, like, oppression, like, psychologically. I wonder if that's going to be something that changes over the course of the story. 
where she will start eventually making a decision. It'll start to actually branch off, but we'll see. Hmm. It takes real courage to improve yourself. And right now, Miss Holly here is being very brave. And I know you can be brave as well, Gabriella. Whatever. I'm done here. Miss Beltran, I'd like you to open your prayer book, page 32, Psalm 103, verse 10. The Psalms can be very interesting. Mostly they're very platitude but there are a few good ones. Please say a prayer for Miss Gabriella, that she will allow herself to be healed by God's loving grace. Afterwards, you may have a short break. We'll start again once I ring the bell. Yes, sister. Well, here we go again. Was a little bit of a piece too much to ask for? Guess it was. Oh, there she is. Guess I should go talk to her. All right, I think we'll leave it here for now. This is definitely different from... It's not really different from what I expected, but the feel is very different from anything we've covered on the channel before. So if anything, it's a it's a really cool look into like just another aspect and facet of, fashion, facet of what a visual novel can be. I think that visual novels are one of the best modes of telling stories that we've ever come across like I, in my entire life I, I said it before and i'll say it again visual novels encapsulate and combine what i believe are the strongest elements of storytelling from all aspects you have the narrative scope of a novel where you can really start to dive into the thoughts and feelings and actions and and descriptive like nature of words that often can over uh, eclipse the restrictive nature of something like a movie, a movie set or whatever, CGI, like they can all pale in comparison to the imagination. And so like that, that you have the scope of a novel, which is massive, but then you have the art direction of pictures. While some of them are animated, some of them are not, it still gives you a guideline of a feel or the colors and the impressions that the writer wanted you to have. So where you have a, a, just a novel where you can have 10 people who are all fans of the same thing come together and they have completely different ideas of how things should look. This allows the creators to have like a license and say of what something should really look like. It kind of helps track us all in a similar direction. So whilst we have this wealth of potential with our imaginations, it's channeled and in a right in a direction that helps us all kind of focus and gives us a platform to build off of but then we can fill in the gaps that we don't see in a giant narrative or like big CGI stuff. And even if we have CGI and, and kinetic storytelling that happens, it still tends to leave a lot left to us to really fill in like the critical gaps. And then finally we have sound. Like right now we've got background noises. Like sound has been a very big player in this story already. I've also noticed that music is not really prevalent in this story, which helps give it a lot more of a visceral tactile feel than a lot of visual novels we've covered. Music really can set a tone and it can really, it can send shivers up your spine. It can make you laugh. It can make you cry. It can make you swell with emotion, but it is ultimately manipulative. Yeah. Well, it's great because it can set tone and can really help fill in like uh, a type of feel. For instance, we did have music, if I recall, during the dream sequence with our sister, because that was kind of an idealized memory for the most part. And so music there was very fitting. But here we're in this like stark world where we're, we're kind of living in a convent and silence is like kind of a key fe feature of it. Like we're caught off from like, like internet and movies and music. And it's supposed to be a place where we focus and reflect on ourselves. And that's something that a lack of music does really well it really helps highlight awkwardness and um captures like things like when you have someone have an outburst of anger when you have music music can, can act as a comforter because it tells our brain that like despite the fact that we're hearing these like vibrant emotions that there's like uh it kind of gives us a distance of understanding that there's a medium here that it's meant to be manipulating our emotions and we can kind of take comfort in that but when you have just conversation just people speaking becomes so much more like reality that it can make it seem harsh and jarring like a real shouting would be 
And so I'm really impressed so far with the choice of the sound quality. And again, that's a marriage of what makes a visual novel so amazing. Because especially for a visual novel where music is something that's almost always permeating every aspect of a visual novel, to have one that's making it so that majoritively, so far at least, music is not present, it highlights when the music is there more often and I think gives a punctuality to the emotions and the uh, the feel of the scenes that we're, expe- we're supposed to be engaging with here. So yeah, that whole spiel is just my analysis so far of why I think this is an inter- interesting story to be looking at so far. Definitely sets a good stage and I had a lot to talk about, so hopefully you found this enjoyable. I know this is definitely a longer episode, but mostly that's because I did a lot of ranting in it and setting things up and wanted to see kind of where things were going to go and how things would play out but yeah we definitely got some very interesting imagery so far it looks like the horror aspect might be more in holly's mind rather than a physical manifestation there might still be a physical like manifestation coming up but for now it seems regulated to her mind so it makes it interesting about like is this going to be a personal journey through horror of her memories and her like experiences seen through the eyes of like a 15 year old or are we going to see that intruding of the real world? Anyway, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel and helping support the work I do. It means the world to me. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Good start to your weekend and that we can continue to share this story together. I'd love to know what your thoughts and impressions are in the comments. Just kind of like rebound and maybe stuff that you noticed or stuff that stuck out to you. Do you agree with me with the sound of like how horrifyingly like hair raising and just uh, distracting the sound effects were with that marker on the board just bleh, just disgustingly sounding anyway i just want to know all your thoughts about it and especially thank you to my patrons who helped make it possible for me to make this content who have helped encourage me to be able to make more content and who support and selected this story specifically i hope you enjoy it so far and i hope you enjoy it in the future as we round it up and remember when we finish this you will again be called on to choose for yourselves what you want the next story we cover to be. So if that sounds appealing to you and you want to have a direct say in lots of decisions on the channel and get some access to some back uh, behind the scenes content, please consider checking out the Patreon link. But you know, obviously I'm just happy you're here. So regardless of anything, thank you. And until next video, watch me up and see me next. I'll see you there.